with the greatest concentration of small island states worldwide, both the Pacific and the Caribbean regions face common threats based on the similar geography of small islands and the increasing frequency of related disasters. The South-South project promotes the exchange of best practices and expertise between the Pacific and the Caribbean through capacity building and it encourages small islands to find relevant solutions that can be implemented with limited resources. As a recent part of the UNDP South-South project, a delegation consisting of UNDP, SOPEC and Caribbean experts visited Kiribati to study climate issues facing at all countries and the solutions being adopted in Kiribati. I wanted the Caribbean experts to come to an at all country because that's one of the more extreme situations that we find in the Pacific in terms of uh, water scarcity, extreme shortage of land, uh, sea level rise which is increasing and serious coastal erosion. We felt it was important to get the perspective from the Caribbean experts and some ideas about solutions that might work in the case of us. One of the things that we also are really struck by is the challenges in terms of adapting to climate change, where there's going to be impacts on the water resources, there are going to be coastal impacts, impacts on ecosystems and so on. But we're also interested in learning from the experiences here because some of these experiences we think are transferable to our own region as we prepare ourselves for climate change and climate adaptation. One of the important initiatives includes building upon natural lines of defense against coastal erosion. This includes managing mangrove sites. Uh, yeah, with a, with a mangrove, uh, we see a lot of importance because we have uh, traveled to outer islands and where there are many mangroves, there are many like marine life there. People used, used to go there and fishing, they didn't have to go deep water. And also with a strong storm and erosion, they are more safe from those kind of issues. Well, the first thing I notice is that um, waves, high waves break fairly far offshore, which suggests to me that this island has a, an excellent natural protection system, which um, perhaps has not been taken advantage of as much as it could have been. I see that this island um, could have an excellent um, coastal structure, not just for the protection of its residents, but also for economic growth. Pulaka pits and the taro that grows in them are major sources of food and economic activity for the Kiribati people. New methods and protective measures may need to be adopted if saltwater inundation continues to be a problem. Further out you've got all those dead, mature coconut trees, so that's a sign of recent inundation in an area that's been freshwater dominated for quite a long time. And that's precisely the, the issue with the village here, is that they've had all of this low-laying area here as a freshwater area. I think they used to have um, taro gardens, etc. inside it. There is limited access to fresh water in atoll countries. The analysis conducted on this mission supports that there may be considerable groundwater potential on Bondriki Island. Going forward, the South-South project will address the limited access to potable water in atoll countries. It would be of benefit for our technicians to come to the Pacific and to learn about those methodologies. What do you do when you are not given a blank check? How can you use what you have or what is available in terms of information, data? As an outsider, we, we identify the vulnerabilities, very high vulnerabilities, and it's you know, really taking its toll, being uh, the coast being washed away because of these uh, coastal processes. But we noticed that the people are not are very much at ease. They are not uh, moved. They, they enjoy their life. And that really challenges us how resilient they are. There is great potential for exchange of ideas, experiences and best practices between seeds in the Pacific and the Caribbean in order to find suitable solutions and replicate best practices for addressing the various threats posed by climate change and disasters.